What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today we are going to be looking at rookie third round pick Jonathan Grenard, the pass rusher from Florida. Grenard is hands down my favorite pick in our class and I thought the third round was perfect value for him. I also had the amazing privilege to interview him and do a film review as well so go check out that video on the Texans Unfiltered YouTube channel. The link will be in the description. It's a super informative watch. Grenard's knowledge was just on another level man. Grenard is one of my favorite edge defenders in the entire draft because of how refined he is. His technique is on another level. He does a great job to rush with a plan and have counter moves in mind as well. He's very strong and a smart run defender, and I really think he'll be ready day one to compete. He should be taking over Brennan Scarlett's job as the starting 3-4 outside linebacker, and we'll see a pretty obvious upgrade there. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, I made a quick survey that I would love for y'all to fill out. It'll only take a couple minutes, and it's the best way for you to choose the type of content I upload during the regular season. I want to hear from y'all, and the link will be in the description. Now, let's break down the film of Jonathan Grenard because the film don't lie. So as I mentioned, Grenard's technique is on another level. Many college pass rushers will rely on their athleticism to win, and even the ones who do have a pass rush move or two, they'll just rely on the same move over and over again. But that's not going to work at the NFL, and Grenard has so many moves in his bag, and while he's mastered a couple, he can beat tackles in just a bunch of different ways. However, his go-to move that he's consistently effective with is definitely his inside moves. He does very well to sell the outside speed rush, then plant on his outside foot and cut inside. He almost looks like a damn running back making a sharp jump cut. And he's often just way too quick for tackles to recover. Because nowadays, every edge rusher wins to the outside. There's very few that will counter inside. And so Grenard knows that, and he knows that offensive linemen know that, and they're going to be oversetting to the outside very often, and he uses that to his advantage. Now, faking with his hips and using his feet is one thing, but to really make this move effective, you got to use your hands as well. So what he's going to do is throw a club with his inside arm to defeat the tackle's punch so that he can't get hit and stonewalled. Because with this inside move, you're exposing your chest to be punched, and that's never a good thing. But if you can defeat their hands before they punch you, then you're golden. So when you're watching Grenard this season, look for him to throw this inside move a ton. And the main things that will dictate if they're successful is if he can really tie his feet to his hands, timing his club or swim move. And then the second thing to look out for is if there's enough space for him to even do the inside move. Because if the tackle and the guard have a very tight split to each other, then there's just not gonna be enough room for him to make that cut inside. But I really just wanna stretch how much I love this inside move, man, because I watched a ton of edge rushers in the draft last year, and none of them, not even Chase Young, were pulling off inside moves like this, this consistently. And so it's one thing to master a move, but you've gotta have counters. And here's an amazing counter where Grenard fakes inside and then goes outside, swiping away at the tackle's hands and gets the sack. So what's key here is that he makes the move look identical to his inside rush. At first, he takes that hard step outside, then jumps inside, and you can see how the tackle buys that fake. He takes a step inside, and one step is all it takes for Grenard to beat you. The tackle can't recover, and you make that one little mistake, and you're toast, man. And so Grenard not only adds one counter to his inside move, but he also adds a spin counter, which is just downright nasty. And having these many moves in your toolkit just makes you so hard to stop, because tackles gotta respect the outside speed rush first. Then they gotta respect the inside move. Then they gotta respect the inside fake to go back outside with a swipe, club, or rip that Grenard loves to use. And then once you've got that all down, he can still hit you with the inside fake into a spin, man. And he loves that spin move. It's so deadly for him. Grenard had 9.5 sacked last year, but I swear he should have had damn near 10 more. And it's about the process over the results for me. He keeps on using these detailed, nuanced pass rushes. And the sacks are gonna come. I really believe that if you're putting in the right work, but just little things get in your way and you're oh so close to a sack like that, like over time, the hard work and the correct process will win out and the sacks will get racked up. So most of the time he likes to throw the spin pretty instantly off the snap like Merciless does, but here he uses it after the speed rush doesn't work as a different counter. But anyways, this next play is everything, man. This is my favorite play of any draft prospect that I watched last year. He pulls off the Demarcus Ware half spin and boy, is it disgusting. I'm gonna let y'all hear his thoughts on it because damn, man, this is just special. So I've been making an inside move all game. I did the spin as well during the early part of the game. And uh, and I said, you know what? Let me give him a little switch up. So fake the spin. He kind of caught it a little bit, but at that point with him being like right there, he was his feet were stopped. So at that point, he tried to kind of like bear hug me somewhat. And I basically, you see, I kind of had my hand in his back a little bit and I honestly just threw him. I mean, I just kind of clubbed him across and I ripped through it 
and it was there. So if you want to hear the full interview and film breakdown, definitely, definitely go check it out on the Texans Unfiltered YouTube channel. I also make videos over there and we've got a ton of great content for y'all. The link will be in the description. All right, so we've seen the inside moves. We've seen the spin moves. Now let's look at a couple others that he has in his arsenal. So he's also got a string of moves based off his two-hand swipe move. You're going to see him swipe or swat away the tackle's hands, and then he's going to use a rip move to finish off the tackle and get the sack. And if y'all watch my videos, you know that I emphasize the rip move a lot because as a pass rusher, you just got to have it. And it's actually what saves Grenard right here. You can see that his swipe, he actually misses the tackle's hands, but right here, you can see he rips with his inside hand, creating that L shape, and man, he ended the entire offense a big fat L, man. Let's go. Another move that I love that Grenard uses is his push-pull move. So he's going to shoot his hands into the chest of the tackle and then grab his jersey and just pull him forward and out of his way. You know, this can be a very effective move as long as you get into their chest. Hand placement is key. You know, I say it all the time, but it's true. If you can get into the chest, you're going to be more powerful. And you're going to get them worried about a bull rush and they won't be thinking you're going to be yanking them forward. But like I just said, the nice part about this move is that it starts out exactly like a bull rush, which Grenard shows he's got in his toolkit as well. He's going to fire off the snap and translate his speed to power, just getting right into the chest of the tackle and blowing him backwards. You just love to see the tenacity and violence out of your guys in the trenches, and a bull rush might be the most basic move in the book, but it's very damn effective. And I just want to continue to preach the variety in Grenard's moves. I've lost track of how many different moves we've looked at. And that's an extremely, extremely rare ability from a college player. And look how he just takes first round rookie tackle Isaiah Wilson. Just He just takes him to school right here. He forces the quarterback into a damn fadeaway throw, man. He better have yelled Kobe. So the next thing that Grenard is so great at is his run defense. He's a very strong, smart, and well-rounded edge defender. And if he's going to take over Brendan Scarlett's job at starting 3-4 outside linebacker, he's going to need to be able to play the run first. He's got the size for it at 255 to 60, and he's got the technique as well. He's very, very good at setting the edge by stacking the block. He uses good inside hand placement and plays with good leverage to be powerful. He did very well against Georgia in particular, facing off against two first round tackles in Isaiah Wilson and Andrew Thomas, two guys who are primarily run blockers. Every defense needs a strong edge setting, and we're definitely getting that with Grenard. He's regularly able to push tackles backwards and close lanes for running backs, forcing them in a different direction. This is one of the more subtle examples, but he does really well to push back the right tackle just a bit, and because of the angle of the run, he can actually get inside leverage and plug up this gap instead of needing to have outside leverage protecting the edge very strongly. And this is one of my favorite plays that he just shows off how nasty and physical he can be just pushing this tackle all the way into the dirt. And I love that value. We got that trait from both our rookie defensive linemen, honestly. So remember before when we saw how effective Grenard's inside move was when pass rushing? Well, he loves to use it in the run game as well. That hard plant and fake with his outside foot and then counter inside works so well in the run game too because tackles are taught to block your outside shoulder on runs to the edge like this. So tackles are expecting the defensive lineman to be trying to win outside, right? To set the edge. And so you don't want to do it all the time, but you can catch them off guard every once in a while and make some real impact plays because obviously setting the edge is one thing invaluable, but making tackles or tackles for loss takes your run defense to the next level. And Grenard had 15 and a half tackles for loss last season for Florida. He was a monster and a perfect example of where the stats and the eye test and the film really match up with a player and that's when you know you've got a good evaluation on a player you can also really just tell that he takes pride in his run defense and here's a quick audio clip of him explaining as to why he loves to defend the run personally people want to talk i, I like to stop the run just because you know i've been taught to stop the run so much you have to earn the right to rush the passer. so um first and second down that's where i thrive at i'm love to create negative plays so i know for a fact on third down it's gonna be a pass i mean you can I hate being in 38, 37 situations because, you know, those are still kind of on the fence. You know, you're going to get the short passes. You're going to get the uh, – some teams are gutsy and they're going to play for a four-down territory and go for a shot, you know. Uh, and it can still be a run, you know, just depending on what type of philosophy their coaches have. I loved hearing Grenard talk about the game, and this was another play he broke down beautifully. But this is enough teasing for now. I'm going to make you all go watch the full interview and see for yourself just how excited we should be about Jonathan Grenard. 
Now the Texans also like Grenard for his ability to cover and he did a little bit at Florida, nothing crazy, just covering short routes and if he's going to take Scarlett's job, he's going to need to cover occasionally. And as long as he's just going to be put in flat zones, I'm okay with putting him there because he's not amazing but he's not like complete garbage. I mean, the most important part of him in coverage is on blitzes. Rex Ryan, Anthony Weaver's mentor, loves to blitz DBs and actually drop his edge linebackers in coverage. And I made a video breaking down Weaver's potential scheme and Grenard being able to cover for at least three seconds until the blitz gets home is honestly the single most important aspect of our blitzes being effective. So hopefully that's something we get to see more of because he did show some flashes of being effective at Florida and some during the Senior Bowl as well. Now, no player is perfect, and a lot of draft experts said that Grenard fell to the third round because of a lack of athleticism. He didn't test well, and on film, he wasn't a crazy explosive freak athlete that the modern day pass rushers are. And so, quote unquote, experts didn't think that he'd be able to be a star in the NFL without great athleticism. And I can see it occasionally on tape, mainly with his bend around the edge. He can do a better job about getting low and flipping his hips earlier to the quarterback, but it's definitely something that can be worked on and refined. We already know how refined his hand usage is, it's on another level, and so clearly he's a worker, he grinds, he wants to be an expert in his field, and I would expect him to improve upon his bend and get that up to the level that his hands are at, and once that happens, ooh, watch out. I said he had nine and a half sacks last year and I was not lying when I said he should have had 10 more because there were so many opportunities where he was right there and he beat his guy and he just couldn't finish it. And once that gets cleaned up, man, oh God, we got something special here. That lack of elite athleticism also shows up against the elite tackles. While Grenard did great in the run game against Andrew Thomas, he got swallowed up in the passing game and that kind of limits his ceiling. But with his nuanced technique, his floor is just so, so high, man. All right, that'll do it for my Jonathan Grenard film breakdown. I'm really excited about him, man, and I think he's the most likely candidate to steal Brendan Scarlett's job. He's a super well-rounded edge defender, and his impact early on may not be felt in the box score too much, but if you watch the film, you'll definitely see it. With him and Jacob Martin, we've got our outside linebackers of the future. I really believe that. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, please do fill out the survey. It's only going to make the content and quality on this channel more tailored to what you want. It'll only take a couple minutes and the link will be in the description. Also, be sure to check out my interview with Jonathan Grenard on the Texans Unfiltered YouTube. I also make videos there and we've got a great website and podcast as well. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And at least until the season starts. And then we'll figure out a different schedule. But take care, everyone. And remember, the film don't lie.